fulfillment comes from the pursuit. It comes from the journey. It comes from the process. It comes from the growth that is required. And I would say that if you're avoiding challenge, you're probably avoiding fulfillment. If you're avoiding vulnerability, you're avoiding one of the best things in the world, which is deep emotional connection with yourself and others, particularly your intimate partner. Next Level Nation, welcome back to another episode of Next Level University, where we help you level up your life, your love, your health, and your wealth. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode. It was episode number 1,499. Forgiveness is a complicated thing. And in that episode, I think we said that many times because it is complicated. Today, happy Wednesday for episode number 1,500, 1,000. 500. The top five lessons from said 1500 episodes. 2017, this journey started. I believe it was April, I don't know, April, I don't know, April 15th or something, 2017. A young kid named Kevin Palmieri, who had just been interviewed on a YouTube show hosted by one Alan Lazarus, started a podcast. He ordered the stuff he needed what, from what Amazon. What was the name of that show? Which the one, one that you were interviewed on. Uh, it was called Conversations Change Lives. Yeah, they do. I believe. They do. I believe. Yeah. So uh, I went home after that. After Alan interviewed me on fitness and mindset and grit, I said to our buddy Cope Daddy, who was in the room with us, imagine if you could do that for a living. That'd be pretty cool. And he said, well, there's people that do. So I proceeded to buy the equipment shortly thereafter. I got a mixer. I went on Fiverr or Upwork and had somebody make my my logo, and I was off to the races. Learned how to audio edit. Cool. Here we go. And here we are 1,500 episodes later, and a lot has changed. We have interviewed amazing people, and we've been interviewed by amazing people, and we have a thriving business and an amazing team, and I'm married, and it's wild how much has happened. We've been very, 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 very broke. It's been a lot oh, of... Oh, yeah. A lot of... A lot of ups and downs. A lot of here, ups huh? and downs. So today, we're going to talk about the top five lessons. Now, usually, Alan and I would take time behind the scenes and say, all right, let's. what are the top five lessons we really want to get across? Let's take a little bit of time to mastermind. I challenged Alan and said, let's just show up and do it because we're ready. I think we're ready. And I don't really want it to be, let's take a bunch of time and think. I want it to be what, from the heart, what really feels like, it was a lesson, even if it's not a personal development lesson, it might be a lesson about yourself or a lesson about growth or whatever it may be. So that is our goal in today's episode. Is there anything you want to say before we get going? So the only thing that I want to add is this journey has been unbelievably challenging, but also unbelievably rewarding. We started from two young boys. We went to middle school together. We both didn't have fathers. We were both raised by two women his mom and his memes, my older sister and my mother, and two young boys without fathers eventually start this big dream, this journey. And uh, for a while there, we had Conversations Change Lives meets Hyperconscious Podcast, and then we chose to pick one of those names because <laughs> the them combined is probably the worst podcast title of all time. So we hold that record. And we did hyperconscious and we did, to his point, interviews. We traveled a ton. It's just been wild. So we met someone named Anthony Trucks and he said a quote that I'll never forget. And I'll always quote this because it's so good. What you create creates you. What you create creates you. And this podcast was what we needed. And... Creating this podcast, creating these episodes, creating these lessons and these stories and these experiences and unpacking all of this for 1,500 episodes. Some of them are hour and a half long early on. Some of them are 10 minutes long. I think we even had some five-minute ones back in the day. Five-minute clinic, son. Five-minute clinic, I believe it was called. We used to. You. So for the new listeners, I just want to share this real quick. Blast from the past. 
We had a five minute clinic. We had a scratching the surface. We had small talks. And then we had a guest interview. And then we also had Motivation Monday for a for while. Sure, for sure. We time. actually put we put uh, music behind and Kevin and I would just rant on grit or whatever. Then we realized that you didn't like it very much, judging by the stats and the analytics. So we canned it because we, <laughs> we, want, canned it. we want it to be as valuable as possible. Podcast for the people, by the people, about the people. All right. So to Kevin's point, there was a time when we were interviewed on Evan Carmichael's YouTube channel and it has 3.6 million subscribers. And the reason I say that is because it was kind of a big risk. Up to that point, we had always prepped questions and we always prepped a lot in advance and makes sense. I think you do that. I think that makes sense when you're new. And I, I told Kev, we told a story recently on the, mm. I think last week, but I said, we're ready, man. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, can the questions, let's just go in there and let's interview him from the heart. And so Kev just reversed that on me right before this. Cause I was like, okay, we got to come up with the top five things that we learned from 1500 episodes. And so I decided to talk long-winded and buy us some time. I could tell, yeah, I was going to say. I'm very curious to see where this is going to connect. Yeah. Is it going to connect at all? Well, I so think to this put is... it back on you, good sir, yeah. Yeah. What, is, what is one of the top five lessons that you have learned from this 1,500-episode journey? The journey of a mile? No, yeah. no. A journey of 1,000 <laughs> miles begins with a single step. The journey of 1,500 episodes, believe it or not, begins with a single episode. Technically, the floor is yours. Technically speaking, the journey of anything st- starts with one step. It doesn't have to yeah. be a thousand miles. It could be two steps. And it, start, it does start with the first step, no matter what. Yeah, but those time. other quotes aren't as famous. I know, but that's going to be mine. The journey of two steps must start with one first. Excellent. That's, pretty that's good. what you learned? No, no. What I learned is fulfillment comes from the process of chasing something, not necessarily the process of accomplishing something i i think back to so at this point we have spoken on many different stages but my favorite one is always next level live where we have our own event we rent out a a ballroom in a hotel and we have it's just amazing the team comes in we rent an airbnb it's awesome it's amazing but it also is like the most stressful thing of the year pretty close and i always have this moment when we're done where i haven't eaten all day Usually I've, I'm running on very little sleep because I get nervous the night before and I'm just super overwhelmed. And we usually work late the night before because we're usually behind. And there's this moment at the end where it's just the weight of the world off your shoulders and you're like, oh my goodness, I'm so, I'm so grateful that's over. I don't know if that's actually fulfillment. I think that feels like accomplishment. The fulfillment portion is, okay, that's done and we can check that box off, but that doesn't mean anything else is done. We're still going to go back to the Airbnb, spend time with the team, and then Monday we'll be back in the studio recording episodes. So I think fulfillment comes from the pursuit. It comes from the journey. It comes from the process. It comes from the growth that is required. And I would say that if you're avoiding challenge, you're probably avoiding fulfillment. That would be my, that would be one of my initial lessons. We, this has been the most challenging journey ever it's been unreasonably hard very humbling traumatic at times but it also has been the most fulfilling thing and if you if i had to do it all over again i would if you said hey we're gonna take all this away and you have to do the same thing you did better be like i'm not happy about it obviously i wouldn't be excited to lose everything we have but i do know that i'd be fulfilled doing it again yeah fulfillment Nice. Yeah. Usually I'm the one talking about fulfillment. Well, but again, this is from the frame of what we've learned, right? So yeah. fulfillment's always been kind of a study for me. Mm. I didn't even so know what for it was me, in the beginning. I had no idea what fulfillment was. I know. No clue. F- the lesson that I would share is one that you brought my way. I was 28. I'll never forget it. We were in the studio, my sister's old bedroom, our very first studio, actually. And then we went to the basement of my mother's house, which was in the same house. And then eventually we had our own studio and then COVID happened or no COVID happened. Then we had our own studio. And then years later, we decided to not commute anymore and do things fully virtual from home. So we are very blessed to have a minute and 30 second commute now, but we're in my sister's old bedroom. 
that she grew up in. And it is hot as it as oh, it gets. God, it, was it was like 102 degrees it in there was during the summer. No brutal. AC. It was so bad. It was so bad. And Kevin had just watched a Netflix series or or uh, docu series or something. Brene Brown. Oh yeah, yeah. Netflix yeah. special. Mm-hmm. Netflix special by Brene Brown on vulnerability. And I remember this conversation. I'm 28 years old, 27 years old, something like that. And I was like, dude, what's vulnerability? Mm. You remember that? Mm-hmm. And you were like, I don't know. I think it's like, you know, if you're like in a castle, it's like the vulnerable part. You know, like imagine, you know, someone could attack the vulnerable part of the castle. And that was, that was an honest <laughs> conversation behind the scenes. And now I'm 34 years old and this is six years later, five years later. And... I mean, vulnerability is the pinnacle of most of my growth over the last many years. And so fulfillment, I had been thinking about since I was 20, probably honestly before that. I remember being a little kid and I remember being like, oh, everyone seems really unfulfilled. How do I not end up old and miserable? Genuinely, that was an honest question. That was an honest question. And it's vulnerable for me to share that, by the way, because I don't want people to think I'm unkind. I grew up in an environment that was a lot of unhappy human beings. Mm. And I remember thinking, like, no way. I am not getting married if this is what it is, right? But anyways, I've been thinking about fulfillment since I was a kid. I wasn't thinking about vulnerability. I didn't have anyone who who modeled vulnerability growing up. You know, I had never seen my stepdad cry, not once. He only cried one time at my at his mother's funeral. And I didn't even see it. My mom talked about it. And I had a stepfather from age 3 to 14. So that's, yeah, I mean, 11 years. 11 years, not a single time did I see a man cry. And so if you've ever listened to episode 1000, it's basically Kevin and I just crying the whole time. So I think <laughs> yeah, we might have got a couple words in there. This one's a little different. A little different energy. It is, today. right? Yeah. I remember before episode 1000, I was so like, oh, no. I was like, we're going we're gonna to end up crying on this. <laughs> This time, I didn't feel that way. Same. Yeah. That's going to be one of my lessons. Stick around. Oh, stick around for (laughs) number five is my favorite. (laughs) Maybe Alan won't say like 15 more times. Okay. So that's my lesson. His is fulfillment for number one. If you're avoiding challenge, you're also avoiding fulfillment. I agree. 1000% or 1500% in this case. (laughs) Mine is if you're avoiding vulnerability, you're avoiding... one of the best things in the world, which is deep emotional connection with yourself and others, particularly your intimate partner. And I think that that's where a lot of growth is. Is, And the last piece I'll say about that lesson is what's vulnerable for you is not necessarily vulnerable for other people. It wasn't vulnerable for me to interview a CEO on peak performance. That was vulnerable for Kevin. What was vulnerable for me was being at a backyard barbecue trying to stay my true self and talking about neuroscience. And I just didn't understand that I was deeply fearful just about something different. Hmm. I had one and then it it left my mind, but it was a really good one. It'll come back. It was a really, really good one. When it popped into my head, I was like, oh, interesting. I don't know. Interesting. There it is. Wouldn't be I was talking about vulnerability. I was talking about fulfillment. I was talking about not seeing a lot of... I have it. Got it's it. come to me. It's come to me. Not because mm-hmm. of anything you said. I did this totally on my own. You had nothing to do with this coming <laughs> to me. I just need you to know that. No, I'm kidding. If, if you really want to do something and you want to do it consistently and you want to get better at it, It has to be for you and for no other reason because the majority of your growth is going to happen behind the scenes and nobody's going to see it. Nobody has seen most of the breakthroughs we've had. Nobody has seen most of the celebrations we've had. I mean, yes, this is a celebration and the 1,000 episode celebration was a thing and 500. But think of all of that. That's 500 days between episode 1,000 and today. It's a year and a half. Imagine all of the wins and the losses and 
the successes and mistakes and all of that behind the scenes. Just imagine all the growth. If we were only doing this so people saw it, we never would have got here because for the vast majority of the time, nobody sees it. Even in the beginning, nobody listens to the show. Nobody watches the show. Nobody recognizes the growth. But you have to be the one who recognizes the growth. You have to be the one who knows you're doing it for you. And then eventually, people come around. It takes time. It takes a lot, a lot of time. But yeah, that's a big lesson for me. If you're not doing it for you, it's probably not going to be super sustainable. And I don't mean that in a selfish way. Obviously, my goal is to impact as many people as possible. But impact starts at home. You have to impact yourself before you can impact anyone else. And a lot of it just goes unseen because it's behind the scenes. You can't, you can't really know what's going on fully. Alan and I have, every Monday, we have hours of conversations. And then we jump on the mics. And 99% of the time, what we talked about earlier doesn't end up on the podcast. Mm-hmm. So the vast majority of your growth is going to take place behind the scenes and eventually it will creep into your real life and then eventually people will start to see it. But if you're only doing it for that reason, I feel like it's probably going to take a lot longer and it's going to be a lot less rewarding. I really do. I really, really, really believe that. So that would be, that would be a lesson for me. So that makes three. That makes three lessons. All right, one of us is going to get three, the other one's going to get two. I'm going to be the one with two if my math is correct here. You could get it. We could each, each do a half. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's all right. We can make the rules. Or right? we agree on one. I think we could probably come up with one that it's like, ooh, that's the one. Okay. So this next one, there's two that I'm thinking about. They're both very, very, very similar. So I'm going to try to combine them. This is going to be an oratory challenge. I did not understand this, and I'll never forget this. We're at, Kevin and I were going to co-host an event with a friend of ours. Her name was Joyce, and she was doing something called the Confident Women's Consortium, which at the time, I didn't really think about this, but now I realize that's kind of interesting, two guys speaking at the Confident Women's Consortium. My aunt ended up bringing that up, actually. But anyways, inclusive, inclusive. So in order to do the best we could at co-hosting that event, we went to one of them because this was something that was every quarter or every month, I forget. And we met someone named Shauna and she gave, gave a very powerful speech and she asked for a volunteer and my hand shot up and she had me go up and do a meditation, put my hand on my heart, close my eyes and she talked about go back to a childhood memory when you were challenged. And she had me heal and forgive, I think it was a 14-year-old version of myself. And I cannot verbatim describe exactly what this meditation was, but I do know that it talked about the five deepest fears. And one, I don't remember exactly what the fears were. One of them was fear of failure. One of them was fear of success. One was fear of judgment. One was fear of, I think, being alone. There was another one. There was five main deepest fears, quote-unquote. But I do know one of them was fear of failure and one of them was fear of success. And she was talking to me in this meditation about my deepest fear. And I forget how this happened, but at one point, Kev ended up raising his hand and shouting out, ask him if he's afraid of of success. Mm -hmm. Because before that, you had never really thought of that. But intuitively, you knew. Yeah. Yeah, intuitively, you knew that was the case. Because you had been around me long enough at that point to realize I'm not afraid of failure. Fail forward was our motto from the get. Just just messy action. Fail, 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 fail. Whatever. It is what it is. During this episode, the Wi-Fi cut out during it. You know? Hopefully in post-production, you don't even notice, but now you know. Also, your camera in... is doing the thing where it gets, like, super bright, and then it doesn't... I know. I have no idea why. Put your Take your hand and put it up to the thing all the way up. Like, block it with it. All the way, all the way, all the way, all the way. Now pull it calluses. away. Yeah, you got some calluses going. Sometimes that fix that'll fix the lighting. I don't I can't guarantee whether it will or not, but Okay. Hi, my name's John Larito and I just wanted to uh, give a big shout out to Kevin Palmieri. I had uh, reached out to him. He had been referred to me when I had shared with a friend of mine some interest in uh, doing a podcast and he said you've got to use Kevin, he's fantastic. He's the best around. He'll get you started and off the ground and 
and uh, soaring high. Uh, Kevin was phenomenal in terms of leading me through the whole process and not just easy to work with, but really, really knows his stuff. So whether you're looking for somebody to, to help you and get you started or somebody as I've done where I'm putting it entirely in his hands because I've got total trust and confidence in him, any of those ends of the spectrum, you're gonna have a lot of success and a lot of fun working with Kevin. Trust me, thanks. So Kev shouts out, ask him if he's afraid of success. And she did, and it ended up being very triggering and very true. So my third lesson, fourth lesson, this is fourth. This is the fourth lesson, yep. Is that everyone is fearful. And there's, we all have this little comfort zone, this little picture of pendulum. And I've talked a lot about this, but hopefully it lands more powerfully this time. Everyone is afraid of failure or afraid of success. I do believe that everyone is afraid of both, but some of us are heavier on one end or the other. I believe that there's a larger percentage of Kevin that is afraid of failure than the percentage of him that's afraid of success. And I believe there's a larger percentage of some people that are afraid of success more than failure. And now here's why. Belonging. I never knew what belonging was. I never understood what belonging was. Now I understand that belonging is feeling seen, feeling heard, feeling understood, and feeling appreciated. And we all crave it at the deepest level. Whether we admit it to ourselves is another story, but we all crave it at the deepest level. And we crave belonging so much that we want to be, we don't want to be a failure to the extent where we aren't seen as successful by our peers, but we don't want to be so successful that we get ostracized by our peers either. And so this is why I think the Jim Rohn quote exists of you are the sum average of the five people you spend the most time with. In other words, you're afraid to be a failure in the eyes of your peers because you won't belong, but you're also afraid to be more successful than them too. So if you have high self-belief and super high competence and super high confidence, you're afraid of success most likely because you're afraid to be ostracized from your peer group or from your family. If you don't feel competent and don't believe in yourself, you're probably afraid to be outgrown. So all of us, I believe, this is the lesson, all of us are either afraid to outgrow others or afraid to be outgrown. And I've never seen an exception to that when you dig underneath into someone's deepest emotions, deepest fears. Everyone I know is either more afraid to outgrow others or more afraid to be outgrown. And I've had some people who were afraid to be outgrown actually flip the switch and now they're afraid to outgrow other people as they started to believe in themselves more. And so that's my f lesson number four. Let's do, we'll each do a half lesson, even if it's not a half lesson. I, I want to make sure it's even. Yep. This one just came to me. I've never thought about this until this very moment. Okay, and this a lot of this is based on being on other podcasts mixed with this one. So 1,500 episodes of this show has allowed Alan and I to do a lot of things that we just would not have had the opportunity to do. This has opened a lot of doors and given us a lot of opportunities. This, this is the bold statement. Overcoming something isn't real. A lot of people say, how did you overcome your fear? I didn't. I'm still afraid. I'm just less afraid than I used to be. How did you overcome your discomfort of judgment? I didn't. I never, I didn't overcome it. I didn't overcome imposter syndrome. I just got more familiar with it and it got less and less and less and less. I don't know if there's any such, if there's anything final about growth. There is no finality. Nobody ever has come up to me and said, hey, how did you get? If somebody says, how did you get strong? That's drastically different than saying, how did you get the strongest you've ever been? Because there's always going to be an answer. Well, I did this and I did this and I did this, but I have a long way to go in order to get as strong as I want. I don't know if you're ever actually at the destination that you desire. I don't know if you ever get to the point where you say, I am confident. I am not afraid of judgment. I am over imposter syndrome. I don't think that ever exists. I just think you get more and more and more comfortable with it. I don't know if the fear ever really goes away. I don't know. Maybe I'm, I could be wrong about that. I mean, 
Think about somebody who jumps out of a plane for a living. I doubt they're afraid of heights. At that point, I don't know. But there's still moments where I get nervous on our show. I still get nervous. I'm not, I haven't overcome the fear of judgment. I think about what you're thinking of me, whether you're watching or listening all the time. I always am. I think that's just human nature. So that would be a probably the most valuable lesson for me. A lot of us are trying to get to that end destination of being confident of not having imposter syndrome, not fearing judgment, not fearing failure, not fearing rejection. I don't think that's real. I don't think that's real. I think that's a layer one truth that I could easily say, all right, I'm going to do a social media post on that right now and hammer out a minute of value, when in reality, that's just not how it works. That would be probably the most important one. And I just want to do a, a quick half one. Best lesson ever, not just for this episode, but just it's helped me tremendously. From day to day, progress is invisible. From year to year, it's impossible to miss. 1,500 episodes, I do not feel any better than the one we just did, which we did 25 minutes ago. But I'll tell you, I feel a lot better than the first one I did. From day to day, I am not getting any measurably better. I am no better of a speaker than I was yesterday. I am no smarter than I was measurably. But yeah. if you no can, Noticeably. Noticeably. Right. It's not noticeable, yeah. Yeah. If you compare that to 1,500 episodes ago, <laughs> I don't even think... I don't know if this version would recognize that version and that version would recognize this version. But that doesn't happen if you don't do it every day. That doesn't happen if you only take episode one... In episode 1500. It doesn't work that way. If there's any piece of you that looks at where someone is. And you think. You don't resonate with where they are. It's probably because you don't know how many reps they've put in between where you are and where they are. That's all. If version. Uh, episode 1 Kevin could never get to this version. On his second episode. It took nope. 1500. It's okay if you're the same. And you most likely are. Unless you're a blessed, gifted speaker and communicator, which I definitely wasn't in the beginning. I would say probably above average, but I wouldn't say I was blessed or gifted. Then maybe you could do it quicker. But there's still, you cannot crunch that time down to episode one, I'm terrible. Episode two, I am world whatever class. You, whatever you would consider me. If you would consider me world class or skilled or talented or whatever it is. So that is a very important lesson I wanted to share as well. Okay, we actually did a decent job. It's only a half hour in. Not bad. We got this. Yeah, yeah. All right, last one. You're going to jinx it. You're going to run. Here we go. We're going to go off the rails for 15 minutes. Potentially. Mm. I have been known. Would be an episode if you didn't. This last one. Kevin and I have put in tremendous hours behind the scenes trying to figure out how to be the most authentic and integrous version of ourselves so integrity and authenticity is something that we built this show on we built this show on that character over everything is something we always used to say the only reason we're not saying it is because that was you know the first stage and we're, we're always focused on our character okay but now it's a little bit more like momentum over everything growing the business the character was the first phase the reason I'm sharing that is not to toot our horn. The reason I'm sharing that is because this last lesson is something that has been so fascinating for me to witness. I've done 4,600 plus one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with people behind the scenes in some of the most vulnerable states you can possibly imagine. All different countries, all different backgrounds. I've had hundreds of different individuals at this stage, okay? The most I've ever had at any given time was 24 people, but they, it's been come and go, that kind of thing. Free sessions, you name it, group coaching. And so I have a huge sample set of people from all over the world, all different cultures, all different backgrounds, all different ethnicities, all different traumas, all different caregivers, all different industries, all of it. What I now understand is a lesson that I want to pass to you, and we've also interviewed at least 100 people, if not more, on this actual podcast as well. And hundreds of interviews, some of them never saw the light of day. <laughs> the point that I'm making is that even Kevin and I, trying to be as authentic and in integrity as possible, still have different nuances and parts of us. So what I'm saying is that the version of 
these people that you're seeing. The version of Kevin and I that you're seeing right now is not the whole truth. It's as close as we can get at this frequency, at this moment. But what I now understand, and I have an IFS therapist, and if you've never looked up IFS, now is your chance. It's called Internal Family Systems. I finally get it. We all have different parts. And I'm not going to go deep onto this, but you have managers, you have firefighters, you have exiles, and you have your true self. We all have different versions of ourselves. Okay, I have one version that goes to the gym and is wicked hardcore. I have another version that adds value on this podcast. I have another version that tracks habits behind the scenes. I have another version that loves kids movies. Okay, so it's not that anyone is trying to be inauthentic. It is that they are showing you a version of them that cannot and will never be representative of the whole. And I think that it's important for all of us to know that because the, the lesson is this. On social media, people tend to be a version of themselves. But that is not, you cannot compare your whole truth to their version. And I keep going back to that because I met all these people behind the scenes and I've gotten to know many different versions of them, but I've also gotten to know the version of them that's mirroring me. So I have high self-belief. It's vulnerably, vulnerable for me to share that, but a lot of people around me mirror self-belief. So they're in the version of themselves that has high self-belief and wants big goals and dreams and is ambitious and aspirational. So I live my life in an echo chamber of people who believe in themselves and have big goals and dreams, and I think that that's true, the whole version of them. That's the echo chamber that I live in. So all of us live in an echo chamber. Everyone is mirroring each other back to lesson number four of belonging. And so if everyone wants to belong at their deepest level, and everyone is mirroring each other's parts, you and I and Kevin all live in our own unique echo chamber. And we have to at least understand that so that we can try to think outside of that box, so to speak. That was a very recent lesson. Been talking about that a lot behind the scenes. Last thing, just want to give a shout out to everybody listening. Because again, two kids from a small town who wanted to podcast and talk into microphones, you don't really know what's going to happen. So I'm very grateful for each and every one of you. I believe at this point... We have listeners in close to 160 countries, which is just wild. I didn't even know there was that many countries when I started this, so that's pretty humbling. Uh, shout out to the amazing NLU team. We have the best team in the world, the most heart-driven team, the most aligned team, the most just character-driven humans. That's really what matters the most. Shout out to Alan. Shout out to uh, my, my amazing wife, Taryn, because I definitely would not have gotten here without her. There's been a lot of late nights, early mornings, and canceled plans because... We had to record or whatever it may be. So I'm just grateful. It's definitely a different energy now than it was for episode 1000. And here, I think this is, maybe this is a bonus lesson. I definitely have a ton more belief than I ever have. Again, it doesn't mean I'm supremely confident or I have supreme belief. There's a lot of, there's a lot of work to do and there's a lot of opportunity left, right? I'm not there. I haven't figured it out. I haven't overcome confidence. But I think that's why there's a different energy. Because when we get to 1,000, I didn't know we were ever going to get to 1,000. Now it's like, okay, 1,500, there'll be 2,000 in 500 days, and then it'll be 25, and then it'll be 3. So now the belief is higher. I'm still eternally grateful, for sure, 1,000%. But I did know we'd make it here when we got to 1,000. So it wasn't as much of a surprise. That's why we're a little bit, or me specifically, I'm a little bit calmer energy. But I'm just grateful. I'm very grateful we get to do this for a living. I understand the privilege that that is. There's a lot of pre uh, pressure that comes with that, but that's, it's privileged pressure. And this is what we signed up for, and this is what we are eternally grateful for, and this is what we're growing for. So just wanted to give a shout out to everybody who has allowed us to make this possible. Second, everything Kev just said, I was on a team training on Saturday with the team, and I said, if I could sit a younger version of Alan down and let's say I was 10 years old and I could put NLU in his pocket, the potential, the, the possibilities, the trajectory, the awareness, the lessons, the 
personal development, the self-improvement, the holistic understanding. Oh my goodness. And so at the end of the day, I've been asking Kevin this behind the scenes, you know, for 1500 episodes and it's been, how do we have the most valuable show? How do we have the show that helps people improve their lives the most? If you improve yourself, you're going to improve your life. And if you focus on great ideas and great insights and great lessons and what you focus on is what you're going to get. And I, I just imagine a little kid. I have one client who's was 17 when I first started coaching him. And I imagine NLU in his pocket and what is possible with NLU, the train tracks that we can help you help guide you. I just hope we've guided you well. That's at the end of the day, that's what I've always cared about most. And I'm not just saying that now in episode 1500, that's what I've been prodding Kevin with behind the scenes for 1500 episodes is I don't care if we have the most listens. I care that our show is the most useful. I care that our show is the most useful. And just like book club, I don't want to just read books. I want to actually focus on improving our lives because when we improve our lives, we improve other people's lives because they see our example and everyone is watching. People watch. I was looking for role models. Kevin was looking for role models. Everybody needs a role model. And we can all lead by example. And when we do, when we lead by example and we practice what we preach and we get better every day, the whole world gets better. It does. It ripples outward and the whole world gets better. So hopefully we've done that. And if we've done that, I feel really, really good about that. Same. Next Level Nation, make it a little funny at the end. If we have added any value, maybe just a little nugget, even a tiny nugget, the piece of a, maybe the, the size of a pea, a little pea nugget piece of value in 1500 episodes and you haven't yet left us a review on the platform you listen to us on if you would do that we would be very 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 grateful when you buy something on amazon or at least when i buy something on amazon or i buy something from anywhere i usually look at the reviews to see what other people are saying so if you would be so kind to leave us a review i knew you were going to ask that actually but i'm going to ask it now because i'm already halfway through we would appreciate that very much again we want to help as many people as possible That's why we do an episode every day. That's why we show up. And that's why we're grateful for everyone who tunes in. If you can help us help more people, you're helping the impact. And that's a win, 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 win. So please leave a review. If you would be so kind, we would be eternally grateful for that. That's my only ask as well. I promise you we read every single one of those. As a matter of fact, I was reading them yesterday. I was going to take a screenshot of the latest nine. And I didn't because I wanted to share it with the team and say, oh my God, look at the impact we're having, right? And then I saw one in there that was basically saying we are taking advantage of people who are lost and that we are money-hungry, terrible humans. I don't agree with that review. Whoever that is is very upset with us for no reason, in my opinion. But at the end of the day, the lesson in that, maybe this is the very last lesson in this episode, is if you're going to put yourself out there and try to help people, there's going to be some people that punch you in the face and other people who really take value so if you hate us please don't leave a review (laughs) if you have gotten value please do leave a review and the point i was really making was we read every single one of those every single one i love you and i love us so i think that's good enough i'm proud of us and you know you're gonna get some i said this in the very beginning i know we'll get punches on one side of the cheek or one cheek, but we'll get kisses on the other. I know kisses kind of sounds weird. I don't mean it in that way. I just mean some people <laughs> will be very grateful for what you're doing and other people probably not so much. So I second that very, very much. All right. Tomorrow for regularly scheduled programming for episode number 1,501. We're going to start over now. So the mm-hmm. <laughs> Bottom of the hill. The thing that makes you the happiest also makes you the saddest. I've been watching a show called Billions on Amazon Prime. Very, 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 very good show. And that was a lesson I took from there. We kind of shared that with the team on the team call Alan was referencing as well. So I thought that would make a valuable episode. So that is what we will talk about tomorrow. As always, and as said many times before, we love you all. We appreciate you all. We are grateful for each and every one of you. And at NLU, we do not have fans. We have family. We will talk to you all tomorrow. Keep climbing towards your dreams. Next Level Nation.